Many people don't seem to agree when it comes to identifying sexual harassment and abuse. Often the harassment starts from gradually with a sexual joke or seemingly innocuous a comment about another person. It may then evolve to uh, touching, grazing, or accidentally uh, brushing up against a woman's body. This uh, grow progression and uh, leaves the victim feeling confused and even accepting of the inappropriate behavior since they have occurred over time. In this edition of a turn up, we continue to talk about uh, sexual harassment or calling on more women to speak out whether in your workspaces or wherever you're working, we're calling on women to speak out against sexual harassment and we'll have a group of women who are here in the studio to talk about their own stories. The program is Turn Up. Stay tuned. <music> You're watching uh, Turn Up on Canal the English. It's live. We are broadcasting from uh, Douala and Cameroon, and we focus on sexual har harassment. It's a topic we started last week. We had a group of women who were here to talk about uh, this very important uh, topic, which continues to affect millions of lives, especially that of uh, women. We're talking about uh, journalists, teachers, doctors, wherever you find yourself, you're a woman, but you're facing what we call a sexual harassment. The environment where you work is no longer conducive enough for you and today on a uh, turn up we have a uh, women who are here to tell their stories or share their experiences tell uh, share their stories and we have uh, if you want to send your reactions you can send to the numbers you're seeing on your TV screens you're equally tag us on YouTube on uh, Twitter and on Facebook you have all our past editions we'll be right back after the jingle <music> Welcome back. It's time for us to know our guests. We have uh, somebody very close to me. She's seated very close. She's called Clarice and Zinge of Better Girls. Hi, everyone. Now, maybe I would like <laughs> maybe they would like to know what Better Girls is all about. You know, it's always good to always remind the viewers yeah. what's all about. Now, what's it all about? So, Better Girls organization uh, through um, through events. We do that through events, through mentorship, and through our blog, which is bettergirls.org, where we share stories that educate, inspire, and motivate girls. Now, for how long have you been in this scene? For about three years now. Now, what pushed you, what motivated you to create such a platform for young girls, yeah. women? Well, what, what motivated me is because I'm very, very um, passionate about women's rights and um, just women exploit, exploiting themselves and reaching their full potential. So when I see how many girls don't even know who they are, I see the way girls just, you know, are dependent on men for everything, how mm -hmm. girls are, you know, almost like some people call them a nuisance in the society because of the kind of activities they engage in. So it just made me feel bad and be like, maybe these people, they, these girls don't know that they are better and they can actually be, So that's you why know. you call it better girls. Yes, that's Now do you have a particular <laughs> story that really like touched you and that really like was a motivational factor? Yeah, um, I think one of the most um, touching stories we have had so far is about this woman. She's actually a woman. She's she was married. Okay. Her husband is of late. Um, after over you know about twenty years of being together with her husband, she her husband got um, HIV AIDS and gave it to her without her knowledge. Okay. So she she just went for a random you know this thing that they come to churches and then they say free HIV test. So she decided to do the free HIV test and then it came out positive. Mm. So she was surprised that was happening because she has never ever, you know, had any intercourse with anybody except her husband. So she reached out to the man. I was like, I mean, confronting him, what's happening? What, I mean, I had this test and the man said, yes, I've, I've had AIDS all this while. And, you know, so that was like, <laughs> and the man um, eventually died of HIV. You know, she's still alive and she's living with AIDS and she's healthy. She's taking her medication and everything. She has four children. You know, so that's one of the stories that really, really motivated me and pushed me because I'm like, before before it got to this level, the man has been, I mean, adulterous, like unrepentantly adulterous. But then she has been, you know, it's my husband, that's how men are, let me just take him like that, okay. you know. Those are things that I, I feel like with, with consciousness of who you are as a woman, there are, so, there are certain things, there are certain limits to how far you will go. 
to risk your life just because you want to be married, you know. Okay, and yeah. we also have uh, Esther Key. She's a journalist with the Guiding Post. You're welcome to the program. Thank you, Mom. Now, what story particularly touched you today? Um, no, no story in particular, but I just I noticed something while mm -hmm. working today. Okay. Uh, a colleague, the way she was dressed, <laughs> when she passed, I turned my head. Then immediately I turned back and I'm like, imagine what the men are suffering from. Mm -hmm. So then I was like thinking about our program this evening. Right. I mean, sexual harassment, you're just like giving, putting the bait in front of the prey. So I was like, no, I need to share it with you because I really felt a tie. Okay. Given that she's a lady, myself a lady, right. then the way she was dressed, it was... It All right, really since you're already in, in, the, in the subject, have <laughs> you ever been a victim of sexual harassment? Oh, uh, well, yes. Yeah, can we tell us the story? Uh, uh, there's one time I had a colleague, then he was after me, actually. Then it happened that we, work, we started working together. Then uh, I used to wear jeans, trousers to work. Okay. Then one day he was just like, hmm, you know when you wear trousers like that, you make me, you arouse me. Maureen, I tell you the truth, I don't know, I just took a decision. I never wore trousers to work again. Mm -hmm. Not because I don't like trousers, but because I've, I've, I'm like... I could be punishing somebody because I know what it means for a man to, to, to have an erection, you understand, or for a man to be aroused. Okay. Then I told myself, no, I cannot be punishing him, okay. knowing fully well that I will not give him what he wants. He wants. So I just stopped wearing trousers to work and he solved the problem somehow because he was still like throwing, uh, at making advances at me. So but he no, like, was still like coming be, around. He, he, at least limited it. Mm -hmm. You understand? Is so that, is that an experience here? Yeah. Not that you know what well, I will not not to be proud, but you know, ladies, men will always run after you, especially okay. when you're a smart lady, you're a lady with potential. And yeah, I have my even my employ employers because I've I've had to work many places, they've made advances at me. But I tell myself that this is not me. You understand? Is this is not before, my level. Is it before the job or after? During the job, okay, in the course of working for the person, okay, you understand, and I'm like, I made the person to understand that I could leave this job. My life is not dependent on it, okay, because what what makes somebody fall into the 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 trap of sexual harassment or giving in is when you make your life make the person dependent on that, make the person understand that this thing without is, a job, is, without it, I am nothing. You're nothing. So it puts you at at uh, a tight corner. Okay. You are bound to look okay, let me just give in. If I don't, I will lose my job. Or so maybe it doesn't mean that like you like threaten the man that is... I don't threaten. I just tell you straight. straight. If you continue, I leave the job. Mm -hmm. You are the one losing an employee. You and are the one losing and, and what human resource. Did it end there? Of course. But though not all men will end because when that thing keeps scratching and keeps scratching, mm -hmm. and sometimes I will not really blame the men because... Uh, we know that men are moved by what they see okay. and if you show them a lot if you show them so much for them to see they the are going to the, the only rich the target. yes of course they want to touch it to All know right. how it now let, let's look at the university days or mm -hmm. from secondary high school university yeah. was it that easy well the truth is but it was not sexual harassment yeah. yes it was not very easy firstly because you know, boys who always want to come around, like you said, sexual harassment is also touching. You keep touching someone in a compromising way, making them feel uncomfortable or making funny comments about maybe their figure. Okay. You have Botox, your breasts, your, your lips, your face and stuff like mm. that. It, it was not really, really easy. And it took a lot of grace and self-discipline to be able to overcome and not to fall into that now, as, a, as a young girl, did you know what to do then? Let's say I, would, high school, I would not say in secondary school. Was it that easy to say no? It was not easy. Or to stand your grounds? It was not easy. Mm -hmm. But you know, the people around you to help a lot. Now, if you, if you find yourself in such a situation, you share it with someone okay. who is much more experienced than yourself. Okay. You share with your mom or if you, if you don't just, uh, discuss such things with your, with your mom, okay. you share with your other sister or maybe a, a big, uh, an older friend to help you out 
So you actually told your story of to course. some other person. Of course. What some women don't do today, they don't tell their stories, they just keep it in them and it keeps on a boiling, a boiling in and them. And at the end of the day, you do not know how to handle that situation or overcome it. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Now let's come to, uh, to Clarice. Now, have you been a victim of sexual harassment? <laughs> yeah, I've been a victim several times. I've been a victim several times, but I feel like the most, one of the most, um, the most challenging experiences I had okay. was when I was doing an internship in this company, and the, the boss of the company kept, you know, you know, he'll come in his office and then give me money and tell me that, oh, you know, you are really, I like the way you are and stuff. Okay. So it, it started, you know, at first I, I thought maybe this man just likes me, like. But then I started realizing that, okay, he started like saying, okay, I need you to come and see me like in a hotel and stuff. I'm like, ah, oh, this might be asking me to come to the hotel. No, yeah, I was doing internship in one, in a company. I was in one internship, yeah. So I, the first person I told, like the first person I confided in was, was my supervisor. It was, it was a guy, it was a man, but he, he, he may also know all his interns. And the, the interns are very comfortable talking. Okay. So I, re I told him about it and he told me that's no worry, that this particular man, that's how he is. He keeps, you know, all the women, all the girls in the company. So he wants to sleep with you. research, you know, the man to, to know about the man's attitude. Yeah, he's the one who told me about it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that was my supervisor telling me that that's how the man is. All right. He's like that, so I should not feel. I should not feel bad. I should just, you know, when my time, when I when I am done with my internship, I should just go home and mm -hmm. I should not. I should not bother to give in to his demands or anything. I should just make sure that I do what I came here to do. Okay. So when I spoke to him, I, feel, I felt relieved. You know, I felt really relieved after that. And yeah, the man was the, the the boss was proposing to, you know, extend my internship, give me a job. But Since he like, had his intentions. Yes. Yeah, so something at the back of his mind. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So but then after after speaking to that to my supervisor, I felt calm, you know, because and that's that's something I feel like all victims should do. Okay. When you have this issue, don't keep it to yourself. Talk to somebody. Okay. It could be your mom, it could be I, this, my supervisor was a man, but I felt comfortable talking to him because he was easy to talk to, for example. Okay. You know. Don't keep it to yourself. Talk to somebody. Share your story with somebody. Somebody you feel worthy. Um, somebody who you trust. Somebody whose values okay. you respect mm -hmm. to help you. You know, give you their opinion, and it's going to help you to find a certain kind of calm and peace within you. All right. Now that's one encounter. That's an experience you had. Now you have many more. Can you can can we have the others? Is it during your secondary school, high school, or university before you started work? Mm -hmm. Um. I went to a single sex boarding school, so I did not really encounter any of those kind of issues while I was in my I was in school I was in secondary school because it was an all single it was a, an all girls school. There was no we did not have it should have some place have issues with te male teachers, but I had no nothing like that. I had none of those experiences. I, ex I started experiencing those things in university, okay. you know. And then guys to come and then me for me I always I always say that sexual harassment is when when I feel it's normal for a guy to approach a girl and say I like you. Mm -hmm. uh, it's normal because you know at the end of the day we are human beings who have to get married who have to procreate that's how relationships start okay so i don't see that as an issue but when you keep when you come to somebody and the person tells you no then that's when there's a problem for me sexual harassment is when you use what you have to force somebody to have a sexual relationship with you whether it's well, you, you don't want it yes so when you use something that you have for example okay. it could be it could you could be it could be um power over po any when you use any kind of force whether it's physical whether it is emotional, okay. whether it's because, okay, I'm your boss, I have this, I can give you a job. That's using power that you have over the person to cause the person to sleep with you. That's what I call sexual harassment. All right. Yeah. All right. Now, I want us to watch uh, this story. Actually, spoke to some girls in uh, the northwest region of Cameroon. Some of them told us that they were sexually harassed. They shared their own stories. Let's watch. We'll be right back. In the streets of Bamenda, northwest region of Cameroon, most young girls we spoke to were shy to tell their stories, but they say they have unhealed wounds when it comes to sexual harassment. At the tender age, when I was still in primary school, and what I noticed from it, by then I did not know anything, but now that I've grown up, that I can see that it's actually something very bad that I can allow the girl child very devastated. Insults have been lavish on the men, especially those who can hardly zip their trousers when they find young, beautiful and brilliant girls in their workspaces. To some young girls, their mates provoke these men, especially with their undecent dressing. So we're bold enough to see the girl's behavior is often influenced by the type of training and growing she gets and insists 
it has become necessary to establish guidelines for parents and students on acceptable mode of dressing. It's a bad thing because when a woman is sexually harassed, she feels bad, she's humiliated. Mm. So when you are sexually harassed, you wish to be seen as Mm -hmm. So to be like, like somebody wants to look at you and yes, and admire you the way you are. That's how you have to look like. So one like me, I usually dress the way I would love people to look at me and talk about me. And I think this, their way of dressing attract men or boys to harass them socially. Um, my advice is that we girls we should dress decently. So that we will not call for that um, the opposite sex attraction, so that the sexual harassment can be reduced. More and more women in Cameroon are raising their voices against sexual harassment considered a canker worm that continues to affect the lives of millions of Cameroonian women each day. Welcome back. Now, after watching the story, the girls or uh, the young girls in the story talked or paid more attention on dressing. Is it a big problem when it comes to sexual harassment? Can we link them? Can we link the two? Esther? Yes, I think we can because it's like you're exposing yourself to the to the to the opposite sex mm -hmm. and they kept mentioning there oh, about women women but we you and i both know that men too do suffer sexual harassment okay but it's not very pronounced now because women are seen to be the, the yes okay. now dressing has a lot to play if not the, a particular type of dressing will not be called indecent dressing mm -hmm. now you dress you expose your body it means you want maybe your your cameraman or your male colleague to see those ties and when they see now they are moved their body starts telling them something else and most often they don't really intend to mm -hmm. but now you are showing them something else and making are you sure about that Esther? Feeling I gave you my experience. Okay. We both have our own experiences at different levels. Okay. Maybe you 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 experience sexual harassment because you always dress. You so let, let's just take for example that okay you're in the university the men that come towards you is it because you dress indecently? No, not at all, not at all. Like we, we are talking about the okay. people, right? The mm -hmm. girls they they stressed on dressing. Yeah. And I also want to say that not all men will come towards you because you are exposing your body. There are some that are just like that. Mm. Whether you are wearing a uh, boo boo, they will still come after you. Mm -hmm. It's just them, or maybe it's just some spirit possessing them and making them run after women, mm -hmm. uh, on it, not really intending to. And they realize themselves later and they're like, wow, mm -hmm. I fell into this trap. But I would like to say that it, 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 it starts at a level, or at your own level, the way you carry yourself. Mm -hmm. The way, you know, us women, when you're passing in front of a man, the way you, you would gesticulate, the way you can all right, yourself, all right. it could move somebody to begin to... Now, Clarice, ca ca can we, like, say women are responsible for these uh, sexual harassment or uh, pulling men I totally to just look at I, them? I totally do not agree. Okay. When people um, say that um, a man rape or maybe a man harassed a, wom a woman because of the way she was dressed. I totally it's not about dressing. Agree. It's not about dressing. In my opinion, dressing has got nothing to do with it. A, now, what a, is the problem? The problem is the person, is a man. Mm -hmm. If a man, I mean, there are stories of men that rape two-year-olds. Was that child showing you anything? What did you see? Why did you rape her? There are, most of the cases, according to statistics, mm -hmm. there was a documentary that I watched online that was done in France. And over 50% of the rape cases that were recorded were not done according, it's not because of the people were wearing, full, they were fully clothed, the women were fully clothed. Mm -hmm. Over 50% of the rape cases that were recorded in that documentary, the women were fully clothed. So for me, it's about the man. It's about the man and his mentality, because the man feels, he feels entitled, because I want this right now, I need to get it. Okay. It's not about the woman's dressing. And about dressing, I'd like to say that <coughs> it is, it's about preference. There are some men that like women in Kaba. That when they see a woman in Kaba, they want her. There are some okay. men that like women in shorts, or something when they say woman is just because they want her so you can never ever no matter how you want to dress 
to please you know be to be uh, um acceptable yeah. or politically right you can never ever okay. dress and please every man all right yes. now who harasses who here it, um, let's context. place a man let's place a woman anyway mm -hmm. we're talking maybe at your the, the workspace where you are mm -hmm. who harasses who i think Anyone that sex, sexual harassment both both sexes mm -hmm. can be victims of sexual harassment it's not just women who are who are victims but the women of are the vulnerable group they that's, are the weaker that's sex. what i was saying mm -hmm. that's what i was saying the majority of victims of sexual harassment are women mm -hmm. but both sexes can be can be uh, sexually harassed mm -hmm. a, a lady going up to a man a, a guy after ab, on and on offering it's, it's him it's right to see that offering him i'm not saying that <laughs> it's, it is a day-to-day -day thing but it mm -hmm. happens mm -hmm. you understand yeah. you cannot just shove it under the under the carpet it okay. happens all right Clarice. Happens. so sexual harassment if you ask me who harasses who the person who harasses the other is the person who has some sort of power over the other person okay. the power could be physical if you if you can hold somebody down pin her down and sleep and rape her if you can the, the power could be emotional it could be status it could be hierarchy i'm your boss i will i will sack you so you have to do what i'm asking you the power could be emotional i'm your stepdad i'm your 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 your, your mother or your uncle i have this emotional um, supremacy or um, hierarchy over you so when i can tell you to i'm your father like there are some cases where i mean the, the first people who are harassed women girls is their fathers at home because the man has that authority over you, and he's my, he's my father, whatever he says I have to do, you yield. Not because you want to, but because the person has that power over you. Right. So for me, the person who has power and uses it to cause you to have any form of sexual relationship with them is the, the, the perpetrator. All right. Let's say you have this uh, big, you work in a big company, you earn 500,000 francs, and your boss is making advances at you, and he says, if you don't like heeding to my advances, then you quit the job. <laughs> he lays you off. Now, what do you do? You leave the Do you job. give in? Why? <laughs> Why should you give in? If you now, want what to will you do in that situation? I will, I you will need the job very badly. You no. need the job. I said earlier, like in the introduction, that when you, when you put yourself in a position where that job or maybe that business opportunity, that education or maybe that schooling for that year is all and all for you, you put yourself in a tight corner. You make it very easy for somebody to, 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 to get hold of you. And just to, like uh, Clarence was saying, just to say that sex is the end product of sexual harassment. Mm. Not all sexual harassments lead to sex. Because if I'm walking and a guy like <coughs> that first comes up, that's already sexual harassment. Because you're making me feel intimate. You're making me, f you're bringing, you're not, you're making me uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. any, any act that makes a woman or the opposite sex feel uncomfortable. That's sexual but, uh, but now, why do women not speak out? Okay, first of all, to answer your question about um, you have a job, 500,000, okay. and then your <laughs> boss wants to sleep with you, what do you do? It's difficult, like, I mean, let's, I mean, putting it down there to be real, it's very difficult for a woman to say no, but this is what I'm going to say. Every every time you listen to yourself, so and you do think the, the majority right thing, of women will just like okay. Yes, let me majority just, of the let women, just, will, yes, just because they feel like let they me don't give have in choice, because yes. I want to save some. I want to save my, my family. family. I don't have food on the table. I don't yeah. have. You look, you take into consideration and all, all those things. things. Yes. So this is what I'm going to say. Every time you do something because that's you, you feel like in your heart that this is the right thing for me to do, just believe that when this door closes, another door is going to open. Mm -hmm. Like there was this woman that shared her story. She was in this company and the boss was forcing her to sleep with her and stuff. She refused. She said, I will not. And she left. In less than three weeks, she had, she had a, 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 a bigger offer, a okay. better offer. She got a better offer for the United Nations. Mm -hmm. And, you know, her life changed. So I just want to encourage women that don't ever feel like you I don't have to a even choice. And even the man still drives you away yes. or tells you to go. So, yeah, eventually. When you have even <laughs> yes, and the, and, and the, more, the more women speak out and say no to sexual harassment, the more we will come to a point where this idea, this whole issue will vanish from our society. Now, now, it's but like journalists still face it a lot. Of course, Maureen. <laughs> Maureen, you will not deny the fact that we journalists face it. Let me just share this scenario. We were somewhere after an, an event. We stood, I was the only lady there. Okay. I will not say my dressing was that revealing. I was well dressed. But do you know that all the male colleagues around me, they were talking about my shape, my body, the way I look. I mean, Maureen, it's just that I told myself that this, this are more than this. You understand? Okay. But if it was some other person, you really feel, you really feel smashed down. Okay. They were like, hmm.
festival at Fisi. They were like throwing some kind of slangs and some, some other ones. Say, like, uh, girls who are like weak in spirit, they might still fall for any of, of them. Of course. Mm -hmm. At times of you course. fall for one, the other one will the see other one you will send off rain like, and then that's, you fall that's, for that, yes, that, 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 that's what find ourselves. Yes, that's it. So I like I like the story she just shared. <laughs> so it it, 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 it I mean insists on the fact that women should not feel like these things about me. Because if you start feeling that this man, this man is harassing me because there's something wrong with me, then it's, you, it starts playing down on your. You start feeling your esteem starts it's going down. Mm -hmm. be, let's let's be clear that you you who is a victim of sexual harassment is not your fault. Okay. It is the perpetrator's fault. It's the person who feels that he has this power over you or he can use this power to get what he wants from you. It is not your fault. Don't first of all feel that you caused it. You did not cause it. Okay. The person is who he is. A rapist is a rapist. It's not, a rapist does not become a rapist because of you. <laughs> it's not you because you came in front of him and he saw you, you are beautiful, that you start feeling that maybe this is not about you, it's about the person. And then when you, you talked about... Um, oh, I, I forgot the <laughs> last line of thought. The second, the second thing you asked... I can't remember the question. As we've <laughs> talked about, we've talked about a lot of things. Maybe when your ideas must have come. I want us to watch this other story. We have more women are speaking out against a sexual harassment way in your workspaces, wherever. If we are talking about all sectors, women are really affected with this uh, sexual harassment. Let's watch. We'll be right back. As, um, as a black woman, my existence for men who fetishize um, this complexion. Um, is merely to be taken, enjoyed and explored, not to be appreciated, respected or safeguarded. So yeah, meh. <laughs> I know, it's a bit peak in it. <sighs> like, where do I start? Um, <laughs> I am, as they like to say, gay. Um, I don't like to label myself. This was a white guy. He came over to me, he was like, you're right, just normal chat. And I was like, yeah, cool, like trying to be my friend. And he goes to me, because <laughs> you have a really nice bum for a black girl, like your bum is not like too big, but it's just like perfect. I was on the train, this was a little while ago. I was on the train, coming back from work on my usual commute, I had on one gorgeous, black leather skirt, A-line, so it came to like my ankles um, and I was holding on to the middle pole. Do you know like when you come through the doors, there's like that pole there. I was holding on there, squish, squish, squash, squash. And then um, I felt movement behind me and I was like, uh, it's like 5.30, that movement is normal. I can recall one specific one that was quite, you know, like, whoa, which where I was, in my opinion, actually sexually assaulted. But there's like a strip of like clubs in Turkey and everyone I went into, they was like, oh, Beyonce, you know, you're very like curvy and voluptuous. And I was just like, really? Like, come on. We're both black. That's the only thing we have in common. And we're women. This was in Burnt Oak and I remember this very, very vividly. Um, and I was walking towards the bus stop and it was like kind of like, oh, like, you know, the whistling, the like, yo, yo, yo sort of thing. I ignored it. And then he proceeded to come over to me and he actually grabbed my ass, like he squeezed my bum. And I fly kicked him, which is how that situation was addressed. Like he had so much confidence in the way that, I don't know, he'd been socialized as a man to think that it was okay to grab my ass, like with impunity. I was at this station waiting for my train and this guy just stood there and was just staring at me. And I felt very uncomfortable, so I moved um to down further down the platform and he followed me and he continued staring at me and this guy put his hands down it down his pants and just i was just like what i'm really freaked out like this is this is scary and i didn't get on the train talking to his friend at first he's not even talking to me he's like oh look at her she's gorgeous look at her she's fucking gorgeous like, mate, have you seen her? Have you seen her? She'll ask for a number. She'll ask her to come for a drink. And then he turns to me and he shouts, like the whole carriage could hear, look at your skin. Your skin's so nice. Where are you from? I bet you're Jamaican. You're kind of fetishized or, you know, um, exo like you're made to feel exotic. I ended up feeling a full on hat, like cup. Someone had fully cupped my bum, basically, under my skirt. Um, and like a proper froze, I was like, hold up. 
he looked at me, smiled, tilted his head, and he said, I know you like it. So my bum is exposed. His hand has not moved. My bum is exposed, my thighs exposed, underwear exposed. We're on a packed train. Welcome back. We have lots of reactions coming in. I will read some of the reactions you just sent on the number you saw on your TV or you're seeing on your TV screens. Good evening. As we know, sexual harassment is caused by itself because the way some of our youth dress in public. For this reason, boys plan in their mind. Take a girl who put on a short a mini a skirt and a boy must be tempted to carry out by the way she looks. The way she looks attracts uh, the boy. That's his own reaction. Um, he says, uh, um, as my own contribution, women have to protect their body. The only person to see your body is your husband. So stop exposing your bodies. No, do you think uh, they are right? I absolutely, right? I absolutely because, like, think the they are not right. Pushed on women. That's the problem. That's the problem. I feel, as, as I said earlier, the person who is raping or the person who is perpetrating this act of sexual harassment is the, is the person who is at fault. It is you who feels that you are entitled to a woman's body because you saw it. It is you who feels that you are entitled to do whatever you want to do because you feel like doing it. It is not the woman or the, the man who is vulnerable in front of you who is to be blamed for your, for your, for your action. It is, it is a weakness. It's, not, it's, it's a weakness on the part of the perpetrator. It has got nothing to do with the person who is, being, who is a victim. What about kids that are what about two-year-olds what about three-year-olds okay. what about children were they running around naked no all right we have a, a special let me see a great mind has just joined us here in the studio she's barista emma kemi you're welcome you're welcome to the program thank you very now, much it's your, your regular face on the program barista yes. at law now we're talking about sexual harassment now before we come to talk about the law have mm -hmm. you been a victim well, I think... Uh, Let's go back to your days when you were in the university and when you just started working. That is something we face on a daily basis. Okay. You know, sexual harassment to me is not just, you know, getting down to the effect, the effect of the harassment. Okay. Actually, it is uh, something, you know, you may be passing in the market and somebody just like touches your buttocks. Okay. Or somebody looks at you in a way that you don't feel comfortable, comfortable okay. about it. Mm -hmm. So it is something, or you may even be passing near a garage and somebody will say, Tss. you know, and you don't feel comfortable about it. I think it's sexual harassment. Okay. And sometimes, you know, even your neighbors, they beat up the wives, their wives and tear their dresses and they think it is their consent because it is their wife. They are harassing you, who is a passerby. Okay. So it is something that we face on a daily basis. Now, have you been a victim? Of course. About? So many times. Can you share your story? Well, I have so many of them. <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start somewhere. <laughs> you know, sometimes, uh, let me, sometimes just... Uh, as a, as a lawyer, okay. you may be in court and, you know, somebody out of nothing okay. is looking at you, looking at, looking at me, you know, maybe my breast or <laughs> my legs in such a way that I feel suspicious and I feel bad about it. That is what we go through on a daily basis. Okay. And then you can <clears throat> even be consulting somebody in your office. And, you know, you ask your question, yes. And what happened? And you know, the person is gazing at you, is looking through you, and not even, you know, paying attention so to what, what you're saying. you are asking. <coughs> you are asking him. He's looking at your mouth, maybe your lipstick is nice, or maybe you have a well shaped mouth, and he thinks that your place is not in that office. Mm. Maybe your place is somewhere in the house, mm. serving somebody. And you know, that is something we female lawyers face on a daily basis, and we don't like it. Mm. We like now to how be do you judged handle it? by our competence. Okay. We like to be judged by what we can do. Mm -hmm. So in a case <coughs> like that, most <coughs> of the time I call your attention. I call your attention if I don't have, you know, if I, can, if I don't send you out okay. of my office. I call your attention and tell you, 
what you're doing is you 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 actually carrying us out of the subject matter of the day. Okay. And so you better concentrate and let us go over now, this now, thing as fast as possible. Now you're working, you're a lawyer. Yes. Now in those days, in the days when you were a student yes. at the university mm -hmm. or high school, now how did you handle it? Well, you know, sometimes we would not even realize that we are being harassed. It is only after, you know, we get to maturity and, you know, we, 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 we get to read some you know, aspects of the law and, you know, the way people behave in other places that we realize that in those days we were even being harassed mm -hmm. sexually. And that is what happens. Mm -hmm. Our socialization has made us, you know, understand that a boy can kiss you, a boy can chat you as many times as he wants, mm -hmm. but then he is harassing you. Mm -hmm. Yes, if it, you know, for now, I wouldn't allow that. Okay. If you say something to me I don't like, I you tell the you person. Right. I tell all you right. right to me. All right. Now, mm -hmm. now, back in your university days, would you like to uh, tell your story to somebody? To you share the story? Well, in our group, we because it's difficult for women. Most women don't speak groups, up these days. In our groups, we we'll usually tell our friends mm -hmm. because we did not have the opportunity, you know, to report most of those people to authorities mm -hmm. for them to be punished. But you don't tell and your parents. And even then, you know, most of the time, I, I went through boarding school, okay. and I spent most of my time in the dormitory okay. or in my room in the university with my friends. And so most of the time, when those things come by, we do not even have the opportunity to share with our parents. Mm. But for those who are there, I think uh, uh, my daughter, Okay. Shared with me. Sometimes she was coming back from school. Okay. And she's just thirteen. And you know, since she is big, she's tall. She looks like a woman. And this was this guy. Coming after her. Coming. So she was afraid. She did not know what the guy the guy was up to, and she started running. And she ran. And went to the house and when immediately she came she told me and when I went out I saw the guy going off. Yeah. And that is what our children go through. For those who are courageous enough to face those boys, they get to listen to what they tell them. And sometimes it can be very embarrassing and you know difficult for the girls because they keep insisting on the same issue. Okay. If and some of them will be as bold as to tell you that I will not let you go until you yield to my demands. Okay. That is really harassment. All right. Now, what does the law say? Is it punishable? Well, I think uh, uh, the law has made a stride. Okay. As far as this uh, sexual harassment is concerned. Before 2006, there was no word in the penal code. Okay like sexual harassment but the new penal code which came into force in 2016 okay. in its article 302 okay. one mm -hmm. looks at sexual harassment i think it'll be good for me to okay to read it out yeah. to the public All right. it says whoever takes advantage of the authority conferred on him by his position to harass another using others, threats, constraints, or pressure in order to obtain sexual favors shall be punished with imprisonment for from six months to one year and with a fine of 100,000 to 1 million francs. It's section two says, the penalty shall be imprisonment for one to three years where the victim is a minor. Okay. I think when you, if we have to look at, we put on our gender spectacles on this particular law, we would realize that the law is not all in global. Mm -hmm. It doesn't cover all aspects of sexual harassment. 
it covers just one. What when what? you are harassed mm -hmm. by somebody in authority. Okay. And when we look at this issue of authority thing, we would look at sexual harassment in the workplace. Okay. We would look at Is that what they mean by authority? We, authority may be somebody who has power over you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it may be in the home, your uncle, your father, maybe somebody who can give you orders. Maybe yes, your, at your, your workplace, your boss, your, boss, your boss. hierarchy, immediate yes. hierarchy. But when we look at the way sexual harassment manifests, it is not only manifested by people in authority. Mm -hmm. okay, yeah. It is manifested by just anybody around. Mm -hmm. What about the, the case of uh, the mechanic who is trying to harass you on the way? Mm -hmm. What about your colleague who is, you, you are at the same wavelength with him. Does it mean that but if, you if, are if is harassing you? Does it mean that if your colleague actually harasses you, mm -hmm. the law he goes cut free? He's not. Well, he's not punished. You know, when we when we are reading the law, mm -hmm. we read it as it is written. Mm -hmm. We look at the spirit of the law. Mm -hmm. You know, they say a person in authority. Okay. So which, which means that, that a man on the street, a truck pusher, whosoever who harasses a young girl, he goes Well, not really. Mm -hmm. Because I am reading the law and interpreting it. Okay. It's the magistrate who will decide that. But I'm saying that this law as it is doesn't cover all the aspects. Now what are the other aspects that were supposed to really touched? Yeah, like I heard you people talking about uh, you know the what well, you know certain aspects of uh, sexual harassment like that of you you know looking at somebody or uh, with you look uh, at somebody suspicion. undress the person yes. and then you know <laughs> some uh, in the street you just touch somebody's boobs you know you talk you do minor things in the house you know sometimes you naked a child see the breast and things like that so i am saying that the the legislators mm -hmm. have done something, but we need to codify other aspects okay. of sexual harassment mm -hmm. so that he can be brought to book. Now, what are the harass. aspects that you think the legislators should like um, focus or put more emphasis so that they punished, so that sexual harassment can be punishable, and so that we address the problem properly? Well. Uh, From what I, I heard you people talking about, mm. I think sexual harassment like uh, in school, teachers, you know, calling the, telling the students to come and, you know, you do funny things around the office. Okay. Mm -hmm. And most of the time you don't even, the, 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 the children don't have an opportunity to report it to the authorities. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, in the home, when you have your, 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 you know, people in the house and your neighbors, you know, all, 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 always chatting our children. I'm talking, I'm using the language in the street so that okay. our children would, un would understand that when they do that to them, they are being harassed. Okay. Yes, so if you have somebody uh, insisting on something right. to you, know that you are being har uh, uh, you are being harassed and the law doesn't cover that aspect the law doesn't cover you know behavior in the villages you know where women they uh, are said to remove their dresses when they lose their husbands mm -hmm. to you know do some aspects of tradition you are harassing the woman sexually okay and other people around not only the woman and other people around that, if the legislators can think about a way of, you know, legislating on that aspect okay. so that it doesn't happen again. And I want to look at also, you know, the, the aspect of proof and reporting and you having proof. Mm -hmm. Sexual harassment is something that is so difficult to prove. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you must report it. If our culture, our socialization do, do, uh, 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 doesn't enable us to report aspects of sexual harassment, 
and then what, it, whatever law that is put in place will not work because mm. it has not been reported by somebody. All right. It must be reported All right. and proven. It must Most be proven. Of it, it must be proven. Sometimes it takes place not in a public place. How do you prove that you have been harassed? Is, is that why uh, women like don't speak out because they don't have enough proof? No, I think or that they is our socialization and stigma. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, and then lack of proof too. All right. Now, one. Clarice, have you had like you have this association, uh, Better Girls? Have you had girls, young girls come complain to you about sexual harassment? Have mm. you had complaints? No, we have had people, you know, share stories about what's happening to them in school, okay. university especially, mm -hmm. with their lecturers, supervisors and stuff. Mm -hmm. I've heard about two, two people who have reported. Now, what did they tell you exactly and how did you handle it? Well, they told us, um, like this lady, she's actually uh, I'm going through that right now. So she's okay. in the university, her lecturer is, you know, telling her he's, he, when, he, when he comes to class, he will call her name, mm -hmm. exceptionally, try to always make her to come to his office, always tell her, okay, come and see me after lecture, even there's no reason for, even when there's no reason for her to come to his office. So she, she, she's, you know, she has noted that the man has a special kind of attention that he always okay. gives to her. So she's feeling uncomfortable about it. And, you know, she's, for, at this level, she's just trying to avoid the man. That's, that's what we told her to do. You see, see, this thing is complicated. This man has power. He's a lecturer. So at this level, you just have to avoid him as but best as you can. But you in class. Yes. You have to mark your script. <laughs> avoid so him as best as you can and, okay. you know, graduate from the course. That's, that's what's important. All right. I think if, th that's another aspect. If, if that is regulated in mm -hmm. our law and codified, okay. yes, I think easy. it would not happen again. Yes. All right. Now, yes. we had complaints, a barrister, on young girls, women come to complain, like on sexual harassment. Is it possible to take a case like that? Have you had a case like that in court, Cameron? I, for one, I haven't had, mm -hmm. but the law permits it. Mm -hmm. Maybe some other lawyers have had, mm -hmm. but I have not had the opportunities of, opportunity of witnessing it in court. Mm -hmm. But because the law is there, if somebody comes with a case of sexual harassment, especially in the workplace, by, 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 by a boss, Mm -hmm. I think that will be properly handled. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you go about That's it? Because women mind. have such, they have the, the such uh, situations, they face a lot of problems when it comes to sexual harassment, but they don't know how to go about it. If you are harassed, if you want to take the man to court, mm -hmm. by your it's boss. your boss. Now, how do you do it? Because you're scared, you're afraid, you don't know what will happen in the next minute. Oh, no. What do you do? No. You now, what's the procedure? To, you don't need to fear your boss. Okay. You need to consult a lawyer. You need to consult a lawyer, and then if it's a working relation you are afraid of, you have to report it to the labor inspector so that your job is secured. And then you see a lawyer to prosecute criminally. Okay. Yes. The lawyer would know what to do, write a complaint, and investigations are going to be carried out. It's going to be called in court, and the person would have to, the, 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 court, the, the victim, who have to prove her case, and if she proves her case with, with beyond yep. reasonable we'll, doubt, we'll have he would be promised. <laughs> he will be punished, All right. and that would serve we'll as, a, we'll have as most an example of the, and a deterrent. Most of the start. owners of these companies bribe their way through, and it discourages others to like take the case to court because mm -hmm. it's like wasting your money yeah. and your time. It is not because you know that somebody can bribe their way through that you would not bring up a matter against the. Don't person. you think that if we had if men punished? actually punished by the courts yeah. in Cameroon is going to like motivate, encourage other young girls to speak to out. Or but speak that's, up. What I am that's just what I am saying. Mm -hmm. I said, if we have a case okay. of sexual harassment and the, 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 the culprit properly prosecuted, I think it will serve as a deterrent mm. to the, the, the men. They will know that they can be reported. But then... To do that, the legislator has to take judicial notice of the fact that okay. if these girls report, they could be sacked. Mm -hmm. And so put other pieces of law <laughs> to be able to protect such people okay. from being sacked, fired. Uh, 
All right. My now, dear. Clarice, now, what are you telling women yeah, tonight? Because women. the main problem is like women are not telling their stories. Mm -hmm. You need to think, where should they start from? Okay, so um, we know that one of the main reasons why women don't speak out is because, first of all, there's this stigma thing. You speak, people will start calling you names. Is it true? You are lying. It's not true. He will not rape you. Get out. This, this is your story. It's a lie. You, lie. you wanted it. How He gave you money. Maybe he refused to give you money. That's why you are coming to lie against him. Mm -hmm. You know, all those kind of things. And that's why many girls don't speak out because okay. they are scared. They are, they are afraid of what people will say. So um, I feel like with, with social media, things are easy. Okay. Now, what we can do, like for example, Better Girls has, we have a, an online platform. And okay. we give, we encourage girls to share their stories. Many people have shared their stories, but anonymously. Sometimes you just want to talk about, you just want to share your story. So, for example, you reach out to us, you share your story. We are not going to put your, your name is not going to be included. Okay. And you can you can freely share your story. Many people have created, you know, online platforms where they where they just you know vent because sometimes you just want to talk, you just want to share that this thing happened to me. Feel free to use um, any of those kind of means to, to talk about it. Okay. And there's something I'm going to say, you know. All right. um, Every girl who has been a victim of sexual harassment needs a certain courage to be able to, you know, stand. You know, you, you need to first of all overcome that, overcome that issue because it, it affects your your psyche. It affects, it affects you as a woman. It affects your esteem and all of that. So if you are not ready, if you are not ready to show your face in the public and say I have been sexually harassed, don't do it. Nobody is following you with a gun. Take time to heal. When you have healed and you feel like you are comfortable to share your story, you go ahead and you see a lawyer. If you want to prosecute, you go ahead and see a lawyer. If you are not ready, don't do it. Because many girls have gone ahead and committed suicide. There's a girl who killed herself in South Africa recently because she shared her sexual harassment story and people started insulting her. People said throwing her, you know, calling her names, saying that she was like lying. As if she was lying, you know. And she killed herself at mm -hmm. a very young age, she was 20 something. Okay. So, I mean, it's not worth it. You take time to heal. If you need to see a therapist, see a therapist. If you need to see a counselor, see a counselor. If you need to talk to somebody, talk to somebody. Okay. Yeah. All right, Barry, say one of the Well, I was just, yes, I was just uh, thinking that, you know, there are, there are many centers, you know, these NGOs. Okay. That, that provide services like that. For example, we have uh, WCIC. Women's Counseling and Info Information Center, okay. which is located around Block C, Makepe. You know, one of the, uh, the uh, preoccupations is to listen to women who are battered, women who have problems, okay. and direct them on what to do. Okay. They are, it's a group made up of lawyers okay. and psychologists who can listen and advise women. I also want to say that you have your parents, you have friends you can trust, <coughs> and you have your pastors for those who are Christians. Okay. There are some pastors who would readily listen. Okay. There are some women in church who will readily listen to you. And just listen, uh, somebody listening to what you are saying is part of the cure mm -hmm. for social, for sexual Harassment. All right, so we are telling women tonight that you need to tell your stories, you need to share your stories, but you need to need look for somebody that you have confidence yes, in. Yes, and let them know also that if somebody harasses you sexually, it's not a shame, it's not your shame. Mm -hmm. Okay. It is the person who harassed shame. Yeah. You don't need to feel ashamed because you were harassed. It is no fault of yours. All right. It is the, the fault of... of the All right. So we're telling women tonight that if you don't share your stories, we can't address the problem. Yes. Uh, probably so we're waiting for your stories. You need to share your stories. We need to share in your testimonies what you actually experienced. We're talking about sexual harassment. It's a whole month's topic we'll be talking about. We're waiting for more stories from you out there. You're watching us turn up live on Canal the English. If you love the program, turn on the rendezvous same time next week. Goodbye.